This is Marian Bart, a place where hiking and going for a walk is a wonderful journey through nature and farming. In this area, we can find different animal and plant species, and one in particular can be notably found at the end of summer and early fall. These insects are part of nature, but they may spell disaster. We can find them in many locations around plants and trees. They are very small and invisible to the unsuspecting eye. Each species targets different plants, some are more specific, and some are very generalistic. This is a distal, and roaming through its leaves are these peculiar small animals that measure around half centimeter in length. These are known as aphids. Eurolocon circe. I was able to film these in the wild on a thistal plant. Aphids are difficult to detect because they are similar to each other. However, we can tell species apart from the plant where we find them, their color, their shape, their length, the length of the two small pointy shapes they have called carnicles, the shape of their cauda and the antennae. All identifications in this video are approximate identifications based on these parameters asserted with a good level of certainty. Nonetheless, to be 100% accurate, we would have to analyze samples in a lab. Bearing this in mind, the Eurolucon circe can be detected through its brown-red color and the fact that they are invading a thistle. These are also known as thistle aphids. Their length of half centimeter is also a telltale sign of their presence. But aphids don't just exist in the wild. They are most referred to as pests. They do have a function in nature that I will explain at the end of this video, so don't miss that one. But for now, let's discover some of these that can spell disaster to your garden or to your potted plants in your balcony. This is my own story, with my own examples in the summer of 2023. This is a common mallow. During summer, I planted two sorts. This one, a cultivar known as Malva Sylvestris cultivar, looked good on the balcony, but we can already see that something isn't quite right with this plant. The leaves seem to be curling a bit, and the only healthy bit of the plant seems to be the flowers, and the same is also valid for its wild counterpart that I also planted. Aphis umbrella. This aphid can take over lots of kinds of plants, but mainly it is reported to be found in all kinds of plants of the Malvaceae family. They are similar to the mallow aphid or Brachycaudus malvi. Their adult stage is almost identical to the umbrella aphid. They differ because the mallow aphid has dorsal black patches. Since I didn't observe any of these aphids having black patches, then I'm pretty confident that these are the aphid umbrella sort. Also, the mellow aphid doesn't appear to be linked to the Netherlands as much as the umbrella aphid is. Another important aspect of aphids is that they can transmit viruses to the plant, making them vectors for different kinds of plant viruses. There are many of them, and for these two mallows, I found one virus that could explain some of the coloring of the leaves we just saw. This could have been a case of the Malva vein clearing virus. This just means that some of the veins get a lighter color due to the action of the virus. The details of how the virus acts are off the scope of this video, but let's just say that the plant didn't make it. Before we move on to our next aphid, let's recap on the anatomy of an aphid. The umbrella aphid is one of the aphids you can find in your garden, but there are more. This was my honeysuckle plant. It gives out these amazing flowers, and the odor that comes out of these flowers makes the perfect setting for a garden or a potted plant. This plant is an Lonicera periclaminum. For a while, the plant grew well, and at some point I noticed the growth had stopped. And this was the first, only, 
and last flower it gave until the aphids came in. Hyatophis passerini. Hyatophis passerini is an aphid that typically affects the Lonicera periclumenum and is easily identifiable due to its blue and green hues, especially its head, legs and cornicles. They are however very very small and they can reach a maximum of only 2.5 millimeters in length. This is part of the reason why the video has less quality. However, we can see its distinctive black blue color on the cornicles, cauda, legs and antenna. Although these aphids can also transmit a number of viruses, their presence alone and the chemicals they produce cause the leaves to curl. Further, the leaves start getting shiny. Left unchecked, this leads to rendering the leaves useless, stunting growth and as a result, the plant needs to regrow all of its leaves. Once a leaf is infected, the best thing to do for the honeysuckle is to remove that leaf entirely from the plant. The Hyadophis passerini aphid can very easily be confused with the Hyadophis funiculi aphid. Both live on the same plant, both feed on the same plant, and they look pretty much alike. They are very difficult to tell apart, even at a microscopic level. So who knows which one of them I filmed? Do you? Time to revise the anatomy of an aphid. Finally, we come to the last aphid I was able to identify on another beautiful plant. These are nasturtiums, also known as Tropeolum magus. The bright color of its flowers and the fact that they are edible and sometimes served in cocktails are the reasons why people have them in their garden and as potted plants. So I decided to grow them. They grow very quickly, and without anything to stop them, they can grow quite majestuous. That is, of course, without anything to stop them. I also attempted to grow an elderberry bush. Aphis fabei. I wasn't able to determine exactly what this aphid in particular is doing, so please let me know your opinion in the comments below. Just like any other aphid, the black bean aphid, or black fly, is able to transmit viruses. It is also able to fly in a later stage of its life. And here we see an example of a fully developed adult with wings. The viruses that they are a vector of include the BLRV, bean leaf roll virus, and the PEMV, P ination mosaic virus. In the case of these nasturtiums, there doesn't seem to be any signs of a virus infection though. But what these aphids are very good at is in literally sucking the energy out of the plants they attach to. Unfortunately, that was the case for my own nasturtiums. The feeding activity of some aphids, unfortunately, causes development failure in plants. They literally cause stunt growth and the plant dies off. When I first saw these aphids, I didn't pay too much attention to them. In nasturtiums and also in elderberry trees or bushes, it takes a while before we can observe actual health problems in these plants. Both of them didn't survive. It took about a month's time to first notice the signs that something was wrong with the plants and that this relation wasn't an example of a cooperative relation. Instead, this symbiotic relation is a parasitic relation to the detriment of the host plant. Let's have one final look at the anatomy of an aphid.
So this is the Awachain Park in the Netherlands. And what I love about this park is that amongst this beautiful wildlife that you can see all around us, uh, there's also all of this wildlife, very small wildlife, that is hidden everywhere where, when you look around. The same wildlife that I've just shown you in the video. And we can just find this pretty much anywhere in every local park. But the question remains, what the hell are aphids for? If they eat the plants and devour everything and potentially carry harmful viruses with them, that just destroy plants? Then why on earth is this good for anyone? Are they one of these Mother Nature mistakes? Well, if you are questioning this, then the answer is, quite frankly, complicated. You see, aphids also have predators. One of the bugs that eats these bugs are ladybugs. Now, I'm a software engineer, and in software engineering we call bugs things that are not expected and that literally have a bad or damaging influence in the software we produce. We can see aphids as our bugs. Ladybugs are kind of like features. They fix everything for us and they take care of the bugs. They eat them and they help us get rid of these pests. They are a sign that things are going well in the environment. Ladybugs themselves can be part of different diets of birds and spiders. And it's not for anything that I did this video. I've noticed, and quite frankly many people have, that the number of aphids are skyrocketing pretty much everywhere. I was able to easily create this video without much effort and without much looking because aphids are everywhere. I've had these same plants for years and it was never this bad. Not only there are many, but aphids are quite diverse. We can find over 5,000 species around the world, which certainly makes identification very difficult. But new species are still being discovered, and some, just out of the blue, as a nightmare for farmers. And this is a telltale sign that maybe things aren't going that great with the environment. We'll still see plenty of ladybugs, but I have to be honest. I've seen a lot more when I first came to the Netherlands in 2014. Take this as a moment to think about the environment. Ladybugs do not live well with rising global temperatures. It disrupts the reproductive cycles and if they and other populations of insects dwindle or eventually disappear, then all that we can do to keep aphids at bay is to use some kind of mix between garlic and detergent or soap and a pepper mix or any of these kind of uh, homemade remedies against aphids but in the end the only thing that is left that will be left for us to do is the use of pesticides All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. I made this video the best I could for information purposes. What I saw this year with my plants is very unknown to me, and after research, it is suggested that global warming is the culprit behind all of this, and my own personal observations, especially around the rise of aphids in numbers, and at least what it seems to be the slow reduction of the ladybug population, do support that suggestion. Don't forget to read the description for more information about aphids. I have placed all the resources I've used to make this video in the description and they are all available online. If you enjoyed this video, please like, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching, have a good one, keep it graceful and stay sharp. Aphid, Pulgaum, Bloodlaus, Bloodlaus.
As a short disclaimer, I'd like to mention that I'm not associated or affiliated with any of the brands eventually shown, displayed, or mentioned in this video.